Hey there, this is Pam Perry. So welcome to Get Out There, Get Known Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking with my cousin. Well, you know, we say we're cousins. We probably are. My maiden name was Pratt, and I'm talking to L. Martin Pratt, who I've known about 20 years or so uh, online, uh, way before a lot of stuff that we have online right now. We probably met on MySpace, really. So that's how long ago that was. So we're going to be talking about Black media. We're going to be talking about uh, how to get grants. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things social, but really how he got started in all the media areas that he is, audio, video, uh, the content creation, ghostwriting, uh, books, publishing, all of the things. And he is so, so smart when it comes to marketing, online, digital marketing, which is a whole thing all by itself. But right after this, I'm going to bring Martin up. All right. Welcome to the Get Out There and Get Known podcast. Join Pam Perry, veteran PR strategist, Emmy award-winning producer and publisher of Speakers Magazine, who will show you how to crack the code in getting out there to get known. Each week, she either interviews her media friends, PR colleagues, or she just goes solo, offering you strategies on publicity, publishing, and platform building. So listen up to hear how to get booked on media places and on superstar stages. Now, here's your host, Pam Perry. Hey there. All right. How you doing, Martin? How you doing, cuz? What's up, Pam? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Good, good. So you have been in this space for a minute. Uh, probably when we met, we probably did meet on MySpace. Mm -hmm, I don't know mm -hmm. how long ago it was. And so now um, from seeing if someone were just getting started on social media, they would probably feel so lost. But we've got Clubhouse. Yeah. We got, we got um, you know, Roku, Amazon Fire. We got obviously podcast streaming, all of this. So give us a backstory of how you actually started, I think maybe as a blogger. And I remember the phrase where you said, I love black women. That's right. how far ago, and and you had the T-shirt to prove it, right? Exactly, exactly. You had the receipts. About that. Yeah, um, I would say also with us getting to know each other was I signed up for Pam's newsletter. I think I was probably a uh, 1300th person to sign up for the newsletter or something like that. Pam had a really strong following. And at that point, Pam was doing um, a, a lot of workshops around uh, faith and media and and websites and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it wasn't a lot of people and it wasn't definitely a lot of not a lot of black women who were talking about this website or www and then bringing it home to where we were at that point which i think was myspace era but also that was the era of the blogger so mm -hmm. when i saw pam perry i was like oh and then I saw Pam Perry everywhere. It was like she was on MySpace, she was <laughs> on the internet, I was getting her newsletters. And then every back then there was a company called Ning. Yes. And Ning allowed you to create these websites. Yes. And so Michael Bazin had a website that had a million black people on it. Yes. Excuse me. There were several black authors, black author showcase. There was Black right. Author Network. Pam was there. Wherever there was black. I love Ning. Was, yes. Right. Yes. Ning so is now you, Mighty Networks now. You know that, right? Right, correct. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Act, well, actually, technically, there's, Ning is still there. It's still there, but the woman who started. Yes, correct. Ning, right, right. Ning, right. So you can get a Ning site. You can do a Ning. As there's a there's, there's there's some there's some black folks that I I'm on their Ning site today. So yeah. Oh, so Lashonda Henry for sure. I'm on her Ning site. Oh, I don't even know she has a Ning site. I was yeah, I gotta yeah. find out. I got see. I didn't even know. Um, <laughs> so. How I got started was pretty accidental. Um, I was exhausted from the dot-com bubble and the Y2K. And um, I was trying to figure out what my next play was. We were, my cousins and I, uh, we had a business that did technology consulting and we had uh, support contracts with HP and Gateway uh, or Compaq and Gateway. And so I was getting black techs around the country to go to somebody's house within 15 minutes and figure out if they had a problem. Could the problem be fixed inside or did they have to take it home um, and then get it to HP or Compaq? And so I was using Yahoo groups for that. Wow. And um, we were also 
I was a member of the Black Data Processor Association, the BDPA. I remember. And because that. of those they're things, still around, but I guess they don't really call themselves yeah. data processors anymore. Yeah, right? they're still around. <laughs> so, so I I don't know um, anything that like I don't know a way to not uh, not be there. Like like to to so with books, I had to look at. MySpace, and I had to see how MySpace was uh, affecting our bookstore. So we had a book, we have a bookstore that's 23 years old in Harlem on 100 and, uh, 156th Street in Amsterdam Avenue. And at the time, Earl Cox was the big promoter of black books. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the time at that period, there were still people who really believed in heart, you know, books were $24 and, you know, they were, you know, they were, they were, you could eat from books. <laughs> so they weren't $10 books back then. Um, and so I had to figure out how could I promote the bookstore and promote black authors yeah. and do it all together in one uh, nice, neat pile. <laughs> wow. And uh, the powers that be were doing things at, at like somewhat traditionally like you were, but you were, you were a good hybrid mixture. Mm -hmm. so, tours and also telling them you got to get online. You got to promote it online. Yes. You were constantly it's saying, just, you guys, guys yeah. have a website. You got, I don't want to have any excuses. You can't, you know, and you were, I remember some of your uh, either, you know, I don't know if you're alive, 365. I don't think YouTube was, YouTube was around, but I'm not sure if you were doing YouTube yet, but I do remember you on MySpace and seeing mm -hmm. video of you on MySpace. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, like, I think back then we had something called QIK, Q, Q, yeah, quick. And then we, oh, you had, we had live stream and we had Ustream. Yes, so I, I know you did. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. you did a Ustream show. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you were talking about, you know, just the importance of websites and being, being on the information highway as we called it back then. Or the World Wide Web. Yeah. So uh, I went to a radio station and I went to a hundred radio stations and said, hey, I have a tech talk show I like to do and I have sponsors already built into the show. So here's my here's my money. Here's you know, the show. And I got turned down by 99 radio stations in New York, New Jersey and um, Connecticut. And so because of that, um, there was one radio station that called me back and she was really excited. And I was like, okay, cool. Turns out she was like 10 blocks or 12 blocks away from our bookstore. And this was at City College in um, Manhattan and in uh, Harlem. And so I got on that station, stayed there for 13 years, did a, wow. a technology talk show on FM radio. It was the first black technology talk show in the New York area. Unbelievable. Um, was this was, Black Planet around during that time? This is, this is after Black Planet. This is so okay. this is uh, 2003 to 2016. Okay. And so Black Planet, uh, my neighbor, well, Omar Wasu, uh, designed Black Planet. And I, and I worked with Omar on something called New York Online, which was a predecessor to Black Planet. New York Online was a bulletin board service that was with graphics and visuals. So he just know, moved. A little, bit, a little bit bigger than a uh, Yahoo group. Cause it had the, video. yeah, well, well, what happened was really interesting. I don't know how he did it. And I never, I, I just helped him with accounts and stuff and some of the block, some of the uh, modems. Cause back then he had something like 200 modems in his house because people were dialing in to, to work online and right. he would dial in and you would see the visual. This is before he transferred that to the world wide web and it became black planet. Ah. So, um, but so he had profiles and accounts and pictures and he had chatting mm -hmm. on a bulletin board service. Today, currently, if you type in AfroNet mm -hmm. and UPenn and BBS, you will see a listing of black telephone numbers all over the country that you could call in the 90s to get access to black people in different cities. Wow. So that's still that listing is still up on the UPenn website. That's before I don't Facebook. think they even know it's there. <laughs> like, before Facebook was letting everybody who wasn't a student get on, right? That was like kind of like the precursor to all of that. And what's interesting, Martin, is that people who 
are not early adopters. Obviously, you're you've been in technology, not afraid of technology, running head first into it. It's like we're gonna learn it, we're gonna do it. And we know that certain things can start and then they change and but no matter what, blog talk radio used to be a thing, right? We we were doing blog talk radio and then obviously that's not a thing anymore. So but you still kind of go shift and change, you know, with that. And because you're with the black data processors doing the radio show. Uh, we met at, I think it was Blogalicious. Yes, we met at Blogalicious face-to-face. Remember the first time that we met and the blogging conferences were a big thing because I remember you had on the yeah. t-shirt, you took a, was, it, was it a BEA or was it Black I, Expo? So, so yeah, we met at Black Expo. We, we, fish, we I think that by the time we had already had met. So yeah. I can't remember. Either, it was either one or the other. But the thing that was interesting, I was trying to remember, was it Blogalicious or was it, Lamar, I feel like it was Lamar and his wife's first conference they did. Remember they brought everybody together at the Washington Harbor, at the National Harbor? Was that? Okay, so then that would have been- You taught a class. While, you, you taught blogging, a class. Blogging While Brown. Maybe it was Blogging While Brown. Because was that class you taught that was in the hotel, it was in a conference room? I remember the class. I forget mm-hmm. the system you had with you. Karen Taylor and, Bass, she's from New yeah, York, yeah, well, yeah, mm, yeah. my BFF. Yeah, and whatever. Talked, and, and that one was, uh, I think that was Lamar and Ronnie, they taught a class. It wasn't there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it was Blogging Wild Brown. Okay. Yes, yes. And okay. I, no, I think it was Blogging Wild Brown. Because he Blogging Wild Brown, I went to the one in Philly. I didn't go to the other ones. Okay, all right. So I think that, that one was the weird, that was the Blogging Wild Brown in Philadelphia one was with Media Takeout Guy. Yes. And yes. a sister who was at uh, the Grio, she's now Joy Reed's producer. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so God. we got, yeah, we had some, some really cool people that were, but I think what, what I, where I remember um, seeing you in the, and going to your class was, I believe it was a National Harbor one. Mm-hmm. And I never, I remember also who was there was um, Renee Schuyler. And um, Jenks Morton, which was friends of ours, myself and, and Lamar, there's one other person I, ca- I can't remember who was who was there. But may have popped in at that point in time as yes. well. Yes, yes, yes. Because I remember all of us going out for uh, drinks and cocktails and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it was. Did you know at that time that 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 Kathy Hughes owned the uh, a percentage of the National Harbor? No. So, so there's a lot of little interesting things I that happen. Kathy Hughes. <laughs> um, yeah, so MGM. Kathy Hughes, she owns uh, the radio one or the whole TV one, radio one, 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 one interactive yeah. one, urban yeah. one, yeah. The, yeah. all the ones. <laughs> yeah, all the ones. She's a, she is the one. She's she is a visionary behind all of the the things that um, both of us it aspire to do with black media and pulling people through because we want people to get out there and get known. But we also want them to build black media platforms and 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 know how to uh, network together, and right. that's really really key. So go on and talk about uh, the the uh, Kathy and, and um, National Harbor. Um, uh, yeah, well, they 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 I didn't know until recently that they they were partners, MGM and and Radio One and uh, TV One and Kathy Hughes and Al- Alfred Liggins, her son. Mm-hmm. They're uh they were trying to i don't know where this stands at this moment but they were trying to build a a 500 million dollar casino in virginia and mgm uh this is public knowledge so you can just google business journal and biz journal and Mm -hmm. uh kathy hughes and casino um but mgm said we're not going to join you in this journey we're going to we're interested in off international uh, offsite uh, casinos. So their casino, if it does get built, it'll be the first black owned casino uh, that was owned by a black woman. Built. A there was one other casino that was owned by a black person, he shut down. But other than that, they would be the first owned by a black woman. Anyway. Wow, it's a lot of money. Going back to, Barton, yeah. Talk about a little bit of history here. Don Barton was one of the ones that had a black casino, I believe. Yes, exactly. Yep. Type of thing. So yeah, the, the whole thing too, You know, we talk about media, we talk about money, we talk about marketing, but we just need to be savvy in all of it, right? Savvy with the media, savvy with the marketing, savvy with the money. And really the, the main thing is that 
being in the space, not being afraid of trying new things, uh, really understanding the next big thing, taking advantage of the tools and taking advantage of the companies that give us the tools that also mm. offer the grants. So mm. one of my favorite tools sometimes to use, and I find a lot of African-Americans on Fiverr um, as well. And it's not a thing for $5. It's just a place where people can go kind of like the Upwork or whatever. It's just freelancers. It's a gig right. account. Right. So Fiverr has something that you wanted to share with everyone so that they know that they can get these grants. So what is that? That is a uh, last year they did the same thing as part of their commitment after the murder of George Floyd to help black businesses. So they have an eighteen thousand dollar grant um, that's cash, and then six thousand is credit on on Fiverr. So that's a total of twenty four thousand dollar grant. Um, and I want to make sure black people apply for it. You know, a lot of times we find out things after the fact. Yeah. And so right. I want to make right. sure that we make yeah sure I want to make sure that make sure right right right. right. And I think I'm it okay. is ending, I think it's ending on the, uh, I want to say the 8th of November or the 11th. Let me just look at the okay. actual thing. All right. So, I so make if you're sure watching we... live, you're watching on LinkedIn, I guess we can call this Black LinkedIn hashtag, right? Yeah. Yes, um, yeah, it's yeah, a hidden link and it's Fiverr, uh, like, you, like we spell their, their website, yeah. Black Grant. So it's a bit.ly link. And I see um, a couple of creatives over here. I see uh, Bob Ivory over here as well. So make sure, Bob Ivory, that you uh, go to that link and apply for that. That's that's free money. Their commitment to not only just what happened with, with George Floyd, but just commitment to just try to make everything um, equitable. Equitable, right? Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, giving, giving, giving things that that push that all of a sudden people now realize, like, yeah, this is what this was about. That's why we had black radio. That's why we had black newspapers. That's why we had black magazines because we, Essence, Ebony, Jet, and all of those started because we weren't given a voice in the general press, so we had to have our own. And and people were like, well, why do you need to have your own? Well, you know, when you when you feel like you're invisible, you got to just create your own platform. So that's what that is. That's yep. what we're going to do. All right. So I love yeah. that. I love that. And I think that that's where, you know, the one takeaway for folks is that um, by being in books and then um, being on MySpace, um, my radio host said, you should take advantage of this thing on, it's called Twitter. And I got on Twitter and I was the first black person with the word black in their Twitter name. So my Twitter name was ILUV Black Women. Mm -hmm. And but when I created that brand, and this is something that I will attribute to you and to Dry Buzz for framing my mindset. At the time, I have I don't have a background in marketing. Um, I now have a bunch of you know credits and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not an Emmy Award winning. I'm I'm trying to get to where where my cousin is at. But I do have some good credits in marketing. And um, the thing that you both Dry Buzz and you talked about. Uh, was branding, and you were the first two people that were uh, persons of color that I saw that I could that spoke to my heart, and I could say, "What am I doing with this brand?" Mm -hmm. So I had a brand called Culture First with a K, yeah. and that's where I talked about books, and I did my Black Power and everything. Then I had the other brand, which was quieter on MySpace, was I Love Black Women. Took yes. that over to, to Twitter. And it blew up overnight. I didn't do one tweet. Yeah. And so, but what I did have was a simple black woman silhouette. This was a clip art, you know, free, free <laughs> clip art yeah. with yeah. the letter I in white, red heart in her hair. Mm -hmm. That was it. That's my logo. Yep. Yep. The wet the t-shirt was I heart black women, black t-shirt, white letters, red heart. It would create so much animosity or so much uh warm felt heart encouragement. It wasn't, yeah, we all were like, oh my God, thank you right. for recognizing this was all before the black girl magic and all this right. black girl power stuff. You know, it was just we felt recognized and like right. yeah, you see us. So you had an immediate reaction to this to this entity. And so that was my goal. But I didn't understand at the time how powerful that was. So one, one takeaway I want for the audience to have is when you talk about media, what happened was I got on Twitter. I didn't tweet. I put the logo up. People started following me. And then I started seeing black people like Wayne Sutton 
or I forget the guy mm -hmm. who the army guy who was blogging the tech dad and then started seeing others. And one of the people that saw me was months and Steve and months and tweeted out. to me. Mm -hmm. He's the mm -hmm. owner of rolling out uh, the brand The paper at that time was a paper. And he tweeted to me, why aren't you working for me? And I said, I don't even like, I know your brand, but I don't, I know who he was, but I didn't like, I'm like, dude, you're in Atlanta. I'm in New York. And he then offered me a job via wow. a public tweets between months and I, I had and no idea. That's how that came about because no of idea. that, because of that, I love black women. And mm. so one takeaway, you know, if you're really trying to get attention and you're really trying to uh, pitch media, is have something memorable. Yeah. Really try your best. Like Kansas City Defender, I just interviewed them recently. They were the ones that broke the story of the uh, alleged serial killer of black men in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. That was denied by the police department. And then four weeks later, a black woman was being held hostage by alleged serial killer escaped. Mm -hmm. And so when I looked at Kansas City Defender, and their brand and the brother that the editor that came on our show and talked to us about the whole story and the whole history and stuff. Every time I talked, I felt like he's defending Kansas City, like his, his brand, his logo, everything. He just won an award at Lion Publishers this past weekend. He won an award for being progressive and emerging as one of the emerging voices in publishing and media publishing. Mm -hmm. Lion Publishers is an association of local uh, uh, publishers of mm -hmm. news and media. So my point is just that that brand, when before you even get started, think about, you know, and I, I did the most simple, cheapest. It wasn't because I was being cheap. I probably would spend a bunch of money if I knew, but I didn't know anybody to help me with a logo. I didn't know any, there was no fiber, there was no Canva, there was no, you know, there, there was, uh, what was that, the, what was that thing that would print out the, um, the, 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 what was that software that would print out the uh, banner? That, um, oh, uh, photo, you know, there was, um, yeah, yeah, you know, what I'm talking photo, about. Bucket, photo bucket. Yeah. I remember at one point in time, photo, well, photo bucket, bucket we, even before that, it was the it wasn't Photoshop, it was something else, it was horrible, you know. So, it, like, it was everything was very, very uh, Aztec, it was uh, mm -hmm. you know, ASCII, it was very boring and bland, very white. One, I will say that one, <laughs> one, say one that. dimensional, one dimensional, and yes, so yes. with um, even when you mentioned rolling out magazine, I saw Munson not too long ago, and he's doing events around the country honoring black women, yeah. and uh, and so that that resonated. I think it was like uh, I think he called it like. 40 fabulous, but I don't know what it was, yeah. but anyway, but it was, he's a, he's a, he, he's a branding genius with his titles. Like, Oh my God. So he had in Atlanta. But he learned, I learned, I learned from the best. I learned yeah. how to pick tight. Like I have to give props to everybody that came before me and everybody's still here. I'm, I'm even though I'm maybe same ages, I am definitely younger in the game. And, um, I learned from all of you, you know, yeah. how to brand an event, how to brand a magazine, you know, even with your black news, yes. people talk about, uh, you know, titles and stuff. And it's like, listen, speakers, yes. what are we talking about? Speakers. <laughs> what are we yes. doing? We're speaking. What's yes. that? Hashtag. You know, like, black, black, like, black speakers. Right. And that's, listen, that's every time. Yeah. Every time you come up with something, I'm always like, because I know Pam's like this. It's just, it just makes sense. And that's the, that's the challenge that I don't know, you know, what we can do. I don't know if we have, you and I have to go to every single black college. I don't know what we have to do, Pam, but I go to every single black chamber of commerce and drag, uh, what's the name? James Clean went out of retirement and, you know, with Dr. Frazier and like A.G. Gaston's great grand niece or something. I don't know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but we got to get our people to just do simple, basic branding that mm -hmm. will outlast. Mm -hmm. After the conversation mm -hmm. over, people are going to remember the black guy who talked about black women who had a logo behind them that was black. <laughs> you know, it's just, and that you is. Know. It's, it's one of the things when... Um, Stacy uh, Ferguson did Blogalicious. Yes, yes. Stacey and Ferguson, I right. love the name. You know, yeah. that was taken from Beyonce's song. Uh, oh, that, uh, I didn't even know that. Like, girl, let's, right, right, right. Yeah. 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 
That's so you know, we all came was kind of like that 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 woman empowerment kind of a feel. So the blog Alicia's was that same type of thing, yeah, but yeah. it was blog her, which is H E R, and then there was blog Alicia's, which had our flavor on it, which was um, more African, you know, Afrocentric and some Latino kind of a, a flavor to it as well. But that was one of the ones where I saw. It, and this is early 2000s or maybe like 2011 or so when I really felt like black people were getting it and that they were building the platforms. They were, this is before they were calling them influencers, right? This is way before influence. They were just like bloggers. And now it's like the Instagram is the influencer. But but at, at a certain point in time, people can or come content from, creator. We, we were just creating content. We yeah, created content, content creator. Creator. Nobody, nobody gave us a title. Mr. Content no, Creator. Never, like, right, yeah, yeah. Content Creator. Like, you know, rolling out in months and will say, hey, I want you to come with me. I want you to help me create content. But the, the point or of- Or Roland what, Martin was doing the same thing that he is doing today. He was really doing the same thing back then with his email newsletter before he, he got to Chicago Defender and he after left Chicago. He was still, and My, Michael Bazin with his million. He had a million people on his platform. Wow. Wow. And when they when they kind of more moved him off of radio, he still had his platform. So I want people to, to realize that you can be on the traditional outlets. You know, Roland was on CNN and then he left CNN and then he started his own, the Roland.com, you know, RolandMartin.com. It was like it was his platform. So ownership is really important in media. And when you're I love building- you said that. I love you said that because... <laughs> Next week on a Saturday, I'm partnering with an organization called D Free for a free event. Ah. It's financial literacy. Is that Buster the, Story? The title, yes, Dr. Sorry. Yes, yes. The title yes. is Ownership is New Black. Ah, uh, I love that. Oh my <laughs> God. Is there a, a URL? Do you know yes, that I yes, can definitely, that? definitely. It's uh uh Finn is it's it's a bitly link, <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh FinFest. 2022 real simple it's a bitly fin fin. and it's um you know it's a it's from nine uh until five yes thank you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nine and and five. The stories is, is out of the new jersey area i want to say yes, it actually will be at in person at king king council it's online but it's also a hybrid it's in person uh ash cash will be the our keynote speaker okay Are you the the yes Yes, 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 yes. So yes. people will know it's like, who is Ash Cash? You know, so we we know right. the names and we know that. So I want people to know that Earn Your Leisure is like one of the top podcasts, business podcasts yeah. in the in iTunes. And they started out as a YouTube. They started out doing a bunch of videos. Nobody knew who they were, remember? And they would just constantly, it would always pop up in notifications. Earn Your Leisure is going live. Earn Your Leisure is going live. Earn Your Leisure is going live. And it's like, God, these guys have a home. Do they have families? They have jobs. But they were just, and they were in their uh, co-working space, and they were, you know, on writing on a whiteboard. It, you know, it wasn't anything wow. pretty. I um, love that. Just like Young Turks. Young Turks was the same way. You know, it was in the guy garage, and stuff would fall over. You know, <laughs> the, somebody be walking by, picking a box up, and walking back over. All the things you're not supposed to do. They did. Every single one of these platforms, uh, Young Turks, I believe, they got twenty million dollars investment four or five years ago and then youtube gave them a lot of money to teach people like me and put them through a a, a, a young turks academy and mm-hmm. but they started out in the guy's garage with people walking back and forth um mm-hmm. you know breaking every single rule in journalism <laughs> mm-hmm. and in media mm-hmm. so it's really not about to me the other takeaway i want folks to have is besides branding is important is it's really not about how you start it's yeah. really about your consistency. And that's what we can say yeah. about Pam Perry. Yeah. Pam Perry is one of the most consistent brands on the internet for black folks. Thank you. And it, it started out crunchy. I mean, some things were crunchy. If you go on the Wayback Machine and see some of that stuff, it's like, Ooh. I mean, but look, look, Detroit was crunchy at that time. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, look that's the thing about all the things happening, you know. We just, got a, we just got a it's Giuliani. Come up. That's right. That's right. That's exactly, true. exactly. And what, think about how many... Been, Think about how many black colleges mm-hmm. turned you down for coming to speak or or didn't have what they have today. They didn't have, you know, they didn't want to, they, it's almost like they didn't want their kids to know about the internet. You know, it was like, it was the hardest thing to get HBCUs to, 
to come in and talk about MySpace or Young Black and Young Black and Fabulous or any of the brands that were doing phenomenal things. Them old folks are like ah, oh, the internet, ah, uh, you know. Blogging. Who wants to blog? No one's blogging. There's a. Can I give um, one other great. one other tip. Um, this is for media folk and anybody interested in getting the word out. Some you just something just happened. Clicked. One of the things I learned over the years was to because of Munson sending me to different cities and helping him open up offices in different cities, is that I have a system of how this is how you reach black people in the city. So work, live, play, worship, right? Those four, mm -hmm. that's the frame for those. So think of those four slots. Now, on the bottom of that, the foundation though, for me is media, local media, mm -hmm. local college students, mm -hmm. local techies, local, techies. local uh, influencer, me, a pastor, an alderman, mm -hmm. a city council person, and last one, local black business professional organization, like yes. 100 black men or the Urban League's young professionals, not the Urban League, but the Urban League's young professionals. Reason mm -hmm. why? Pam, why, the YPs, well, they had the first Twitter accounts. 100 black men had the first Twitter accounts. When I could talk to them, I cannot talk to NWCP about the internet or about Twitter yeah, or they, about. They tend to lag a little bit. But, but the hundred black men, hundred black women, they were there. They were on Twitter first. Same thing with the well, young professionals chapters, which is a different, you know, um, what do you call it? Different charter than mm -hmm. Urban League. They they were there, and they were also armed. But they had Facebook pages too. So if mm -hmm. you look for those five areas in the city, you're going to find probably the National Sales Network. The Black Association of Nurses, you're going to MBAs. find the Black doctors MBAs. and the lawyers, right? Mm -hmm. If you can hit those chapters of those business organizations and those four other places, that's my system for making an impact in a city. Mm -hmm. That is good. Yeah, it is. And and churches are definitely like the hub. That's been the, that's been the the uh, the spot for all things that are going to change. And the community is really the place where we worship, right? So that's like where it's the, the sounding board of how you rally us together. And that's what, and also George Frazier's uh, power networking conference. It's not <laughs> first, but he is, he is Mr. Networker, right? He's he OG. Is, he's a goat in that. He's that, that, the OG. He is the goat. back to Tony, OG, Tony, OG. Tony uh, Brown. Oh my God. I love Tony Brown. Well, he's, he's, he was in Detroit, but he was also in New York as well. So yes, right. we got that. There was one lady from Detroit. Her name was Gabby. She um, had graduated, I guess, from um, Holy, uh, Holy, oh, not, I don't want to say Holy Folk, but Holyoke. Okay. Graduated yeah, from yeah, Holyoke, okay. had the, the degree in English and she just really was a creative and she loved fashion. So she started this blog, right? Just started this little blog and it blew up because she was heavy. This is way before Lizzo, right? This is like 10 right. years before Lizzo. And she was just kind of like doing this thing and it blew up. And then there was a contest on Twitter and they wanted to have someone on the red carpet at, I think it was MTV Awards. And I think she, yeah, won. And she right. became like the it girl. And uh, Gabby, who's from Detroit, just kind of blew up. And then obviously she moved her blog from blogger.com from blogspot.com <laughs> to a real website yeah, and right. i mean she's in different magazines vogue today show you know just talking about body positivity and all this kind of thing but it started because she didn't know she no one was hiring her at the time she had right. this degree from this nice little school and no one was hiring so she just she's a writer so she just started writing and that's where the creativity came in of the online space. It created a whole platform and brand for Gabby. Yep, yep. And I can think of her name, her last name. It's not Douglas, but it's I know you're talking about. And yeah. I can see her face. Cute, look, cute, cute young lady. You know, just love <laughs> her, love her to pieces. Right. And and that that the whole part of it is is that staying consistent with what you're doing and and the passion the quote I put it in your in the show notes if you if you follow your passion you never really have to work I think that's the quote you kind of said on LinkedIn it, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 paraphrasing it and I love books and I love authors so speakers magazine features speakers and then I had the chocolate pages remember it was a show it was a Ooh, chocolate pages oh that's right chocolate pages <laughs> y'all don't understand chocolate pages was, my, was it, it and, and, and here's the thing and I, I 
you know what? I'm glad we had this conversation because I'm so good you can eat them, right? (laughs) Well, but like you, I need to have more Pam in my life because, and I I always want to give credit where credit is due. And so what I'm working on is a is a a, like a a black author review type of Mm -hmm. magazine or or what's the other one? QBR quarterly black review. Mm -hmm. I'm working Mm -hmm. on that, but but. To have a Pam Perry on my advisory board, or to have, and and the thing is that to and even I will even put, you know, in every issue, inspired by Chocolate Pages because people don't understand Chocolate we didn't pages. have Publishers Weekly was not covering Black folks. No, Publishers no. Weekly was like if you you had to be a Omar Shari, you had to be a published Pierre author. McMillan. Mm-hmm. It, right, correct, right, 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 mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know w- uh, Walter, you know Mosley, or you know mm-hmm. Walter D, you know whatever. But you had to be somebody that for them to talk about you. And a messed up thing is still sort of like that today, yeah. which is why we need a black. To me, we need a book review magazine, and then we need a magazine that was my magazine. Kind of leans more like chocolate pages because it's going to talk about the gossip and. Some of the rumors and also literary, some of the yeah, the literary, right. world. literary world, right? Exactly. But I totally, yo, I used to love chocolate pages, and that I just want to say, go back to Gabby real quick. The thing that Gabby did, and the thing that I did, and the thing you did that's consistent for other people. The third and last takeaway would be take time to invest in a new platform. I do not care what anybody, even Martin, when people tell, I've told people I don't want to be on Twitter. I told my my co-host that. I said it three or four times to her, and she kept how Then I said the same thing about Clubhouse. I said, my lawyer said, you should be on Clubhouse. Like, no, nah, Fred, I'm good. You should be on Clubhouse. Nope. Last time he told me, he's like, I'm firing you unless you get on us. I should have realized <laughs> I, have a, I have a thing that people tell me to do something that's a platform, and I go, oh, I'm doing that, and I should be there, right? And so mm-hmm. I have those people in my life that will identify things for me, but my point is that other people like Gabby, you may be able to identify it for yourself. And somebody may say, Why are you on the metaverse? It's too early. It looks bad. Ooh. Wherever and you think you should be at, mm-hmm. go ahead and get there and dominate that space. Yes. Talk about it, yes. embrace it, make a t shirt. Yes. There's a company called Printful. You can make t shirts for $14 on printful.com and have your own logo and your brand and all this, you know, beautiful shirt, whichever how you want it, like Gabby, and be on the red carpet, volunteer to cover something for somebody, and now you got your logo there, and this big, bigger network pans over, and somebody's oh, that's a nice t-shirt. Where's, who's that person? You know, and so my point is really embrace the new platform, whatever that new platform is, mm-hmm. that you feel you should be there. F what everybody else tells you. You should definitely have a website. You should definitely have this. You should definitely, if you feel like your interest is best suited by being over here and then you'll put all your eggs in that basket, go for it. Yes, yes, that is. And so we got to have you back to talk about the whole metaverse and NFTs and all of that as well, because you know, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm in there looking at that as well, because I want to hold a press conference in that whole metaverse. <laughs> I love it. I, love it. I, I want love to be the first one it. to do that. You I know, it. it's like it. it's coming, it's coming. And so that is so, so key. I have people that are afraid of so many things. It's like, what are you afraid of? You know, we are grown folks. We can figure out this thing. It's moving. It's moving faster and faster. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So are you please. are you live on Amazon? Are you an Amazon influencer? I see yes, what is that? I am. Hey fellow influencer. I hey, know fellow influencer. <laughs> I knew cause you know I had to be up in there on the Amazon live. Yes, I am. I'm an Amazon. I am an Amazon influence. But you know what? I only do books. I know you no, that's that's that that's what that's that's why I'm there. I'm there I'm, to do books, I'm, but I do do other stuff. I, yeah. I do do I, I got it. I, mean, I know, gotta get the free products. You know, some people it. will say, Hey, I'm gonna do this and that. Listen, you know, and I just do I just do the authors, I interview the authors. It's kind of like my new version of the chocolate pages, right? So I do yes. one author, you know, per per time, and it goes in with the speakers. So obviously speakers write books and, and then authors speak. So it's, it kind of goes in together. So no, that's, that is, that is one of the Are key you? things, but we've been, been consistent doing this for a long, long time. Right. And so I want people not to know to that. The this. Yeah. And, and the whole thing of, you want to build a brand, build a platform. It does take time, but follow your passion, be yes. consistent, 
connect and build community. You've always been building community. That's why you would show up at BEA and you would show up at the blog listings and blog, blog, whatever. We're showing up and we're meeting people that we meet. We met online, but then you're the same people. Like yes. when I saw you, I hugged you. It was like, I felt yes, like yes. I knew you because you were the same, you know, and we care about each other. And that's yes. why I do the things that I do with our community, with the black. See, I've been community. going to take your daughter to, to college that first that first day or whatever you you were getting in the car. Like it, like I mean, to your point, I you know, and that's the same thing. It's an advertising now. How about that? Like she just graduated. Wow. She's been out of school four years, working as a wow. project manager. Time. I'm like, we need you, girl. We need yes. you. On her job on LinkedIn, goes. Black LinkedIn. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And she needs to be. She yeah. I, you know, yeah, we, we got to talk about a bunch of different things. The new generation, uh, the millennials versus Generation Z, and these mm-hmm. Gen A's, these little kids, they come in with this plan. I call them my great great grandparents who are coming back to save us because these little babies are coming with attitude, with determination. Mm-hmm. They're not, this little girl of mine, she didn't want to crawl. She wanted to walk. She was mad that she had to crawl. Like, oh, I'm, I'm and now she's trying to open a door. She can't reach the doorknob. She she keeps going back to the door to open the door to go outside. It's like, like oh, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> it's a whole new level of fearlessness. And it's yes, like, it is, yes, it is that crazy. right there. So when I find my baby boomers and above that are afraid, I'm like, no, we, yeah. we should not be afraid. Yeah. We should really embrace all these things. They're here to make our life easier. Yeah. StreamYard is making life easier. You know, I've got uh, my uh, road. Uh, Podcast, podcast here, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, all these kind of things. And it's yeah. like, I'll hit certain buttons. It's like, okay, I'm to, like, yeah. what do these do? But I'm going, I'm going to be up in there. It's like, you're not going to leave me behind. So that is the whole point, you know, make yeah. sure that you're always just going forward, following, having conversations. What's your clubhouse room what, or your clubhouse club? Sure. I guess you say. So we do on Sundays, the club that's uh, probably say that's most consistent for people that we've watched in the show will be Black LinkedIn is Thriving. That's okay. Sundays at 9 a.m. Uh, we hold space for Black professionals, creators, uh, you know, anybody in business to just have that. a conversation about where we are. Uh, last week's was about making money moves and how we're, we're, what things that we're working on that we're doing and just self-promotion. But then we also have a private club, a private group on LinkedIn that we support each other also. So if you go to Black LinkedIn is Thriving, just that hashtag, you can follow us on, on uh, LinkedIn. Cool. And then every night at 9.30, uh, taken off this week because we're preparing for a relaunch of our um, uh, content, uh, Your Black News is normally on 9.30 every night. Mm-hmm. And so I broadcast it also on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. So if you just go to any any platform, your Black News, you can see our previous rooms. We we stuck we originated in Clubhouse, but we send it out through StreamYard. Okay. We send it out, and I'm on this platform called KBCN TV uh, mm-hmm. on Roku. They have their their Roku app, uh, and we're building out our own uh, apps for on other platforms. So, your Black News uh, every night at nine thirty, starting next week, we'll be back, and then. Um, Black LinkedIn is thriving on Sundays at nine. Okay. I love it. I love it. So we will definitely be connecting on that. So uh, L. Martin Pratt, you know, I like to put that in there with the L. I would thank you so much for joining us today on Get Out There, Get Known. So make sure that uh, a lot of information was dropped. You'll see the show notes. They'll be up on the on the uh, Pam Perry PR site. So definitely make sure that you connect with him. He is very friendly. So when did you get that site? What was the year? Was it 96, 97? No, that had to be 99. Wow. It had to be 99. It was right before 2000. It was kind of like before the two YK, you know, if the world's going to explode type of thing, you know, like, well, if it's going to explode, I'm going to have a website. (laughs) It's like two YK. I'm going to hit you in 2025 to to start preparing you for your 30 year anniversary. You got to do something special because- because yes. black, you know, just think about it. Like a lot of people were not, you know, you were one of the first. You, Adria Davis, with a, with a dog on village, the dog yes. village, and you know, there's not. There was a point at which I'm not going to mention a person, but she was a fa- She's a famous wife of a person, famous person's wife, who part was going to partner with Ariana Huffington to build a black news site, and she was yeah. like, "We'll be the first black news site on the internet." And I was like, "What? There's this one, that one, this." 
you know, it was in 20, 2006 or something like that, or 20, oh, yeah, 2010. It was yeah, it was and it was like, come on now. Yeah. But no one has really celebrated these Cisco like Dog Dog Village and also you and blackfacts.com are the mm -hmm. oldest black sites that are still in existence. And in the Dante, same black, yeah, black news. Yeah, Dante, 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 that's right. Dante, 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 Dante black Dante. news. He, yeah. yeah, he's still there and he had a, he bought everything black. At a certain point in time, it's like black, whatever. Dante probably owns it. He's he yeah. he he ate up all the internet real estate, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, and I will talk with you later. God bless. You've been listening to the Get Out There and Get Known podcast brought to you by PamPerryPR.com, where you'll get insider tips on how to build your platform, pitch the media, and promote yourself with confidence. Head over to PamPerryPR.com and get the exclusive video training on the seven must-have marketing materials you need before you pitch in order to be considered in media places or superstar stages.